Welcome to your Ramsey County Adult Foster Care Information Meeting. I'm Jim Kepfer. I'm an adult foster care licensor, training coordinator, and moratorium liaison. After completing this information video, you will receive a post-test. After the post-test, you will receive a packet of licensing paperwork. Our adult foster care unit, we have one supervisor, one office administrator, and five licensors. Adult foster care provides a less restrictive housing for option for the elderly, medically fragile, brain injured, and disabled populations. Our emphasis is on community inclusion instead of institutions. Often less is more. In a healthcare, there's a concept of least restrictive alternatives. This covers the range of care from completely independent to total care in a facility. Adult foster care is somewhere in between these two extremes. Adult foster care became popular in the 1980s when local regional treatment centers started reducing their numbers in preparation of closing their doors. In an attempt to assure health, safety, and well being of adults with disabilities, adult foster care services are provided in a home like atmosphere and promote community inclusion. Adult foster care services help form relationships. Often the goal is to be independent. That may not ever happen, but we never take that goal away from people. For some, the goal is simply to get stabilized. Adult foster care means a residence operated by a provider who provides 24 hour foster care to no more than four functionally impaired adults. Functional impairments means that a person has trouble meeting the ordinary demands of life caring for oneself physically, managing finances or medications, being able to recognize or cope with reality, being able to handle household tasks. Often these abilities are called activities of daily living. It is a threshold that is used to assess an individual's capacity level. Adult foster care provides five different types of services, lodging, food, supervision, protection, and household services. Usually a private room, However, two residents can agree to share a room if they'd like, though in our experience, most folks like a room of their own. The provider also provides three meals a day and snacks and a special diet if ordered. You will provide as much supervision as needed to assure the safety and a sense of well-being. You will provide an environment that is safe, both in the home and the community. And often you'll be either performing these tasks or instructing residents on how to do their own household cleaning, laundry, health services, hygiene, and other daily living tasks. Personal care, independent living skills assistance or training, medication assistance, health supervision, safeguarding cash resources, reasonable transportation, leisure, and recreation. Self-care and self-preservation skills, teaching awareness in the community and in daily activities. You'll also be teaching effective language and communication, encouraging community orientation and participation, allowing and encouraging social relationships and behavior management as needed. Providers cannot restrict rights, take away personal items, administer injections, stop one, someone from making poor choices, and in many cases, you can't fix the problem. 24-hour care. Caregiver must be in the home during normal sleeping hours. It also means having an awareness of your resident's daily comings and goings. Maximum capacity of four adult, adults is allowed. The capacity can be less than four. Your home's maximum capacity will be determined by you and your licensor. You must have available rooms for your residents and your family. Some of the rules governing adult foster care, the Human Services Licensing Act, Chapter 245A. These may be changed every year by legislation and these statutes supersede the rules. Other rules include the Background Study Statute, Chapter 245C. The Department of Human Services completes the NET Study 2.0. Applicant complete the study online at the cost of $50 now, sorry, per subject studied photo and fingerprinting is required. Other rules, rule 203, adult foster care rule, and there's the chapter citations. Minnesota Fire Code and Vulnerable Adult Acts are brought into our licensing process as well. Every applicant for adult foster care has to have an inspection of their home by the local or state fire marshal. If your home doesn't pass this inspection, you either need to correct the issues or you can't be licensed. 
All licensed providers are mandated reporters. You are required by law to report if you feel as the resident has been maltreated. The vulnerable adult rules explain what abuse, neglect, and exploitation are, and when something should be reported. There are three types of traditional or family foster care. One with a 245ND endorsement from the state that allows you to, to bill for disability waivers. If you don't have the 245D endorsement, you can still have somebody on the elderly waiver and bill for that. There's also host homes where a corporation will hold the 245D and you will hold the traditional family license. Currently, there's a moratorium on the development of new corporate sites. Family foster care, or what we call traditional foster care, and recently has been renamed into family residential services, may be operated by a family or an individual. The provider lives in the home and provides most of the direct care to the resident 24 hours a day. The provider is the license holder. The home is the provider's main resident. Who lives in an adult foster home? People who are unable to live on their own due to a functional impairment. Some of these include developmental disabilities, mental or emotional illness, physical handicap, traumatic brain injury, chemical dependency, those who need medical care, and the elderly. We find that clients in foster care who are willing to follow the rules, understand that they contribute to the cost of their care, usually work out well. Clients who don't usually work out well uh, usually have drug problems where it's problematic, no intention to following the rules, they are a danger to self or others, Often they'll misuse funds, leading to an inability to pay their portion of the rent. Individuals who don't want to be in placement. Be sure you communicate with your licensor the type of clients that you are willing to work with or receive training for. Where do most residents come from? Mostly from Ramsey County case managers. Hospitals, nursing homes, residential facilities, families, other counties, and occasionally self-placement. All clients need an assessment of their functional impairment before a placement can be made. The assessment is completed by the placing worker. The placing worker can be a social worker, public health nurse, doctor, et cetera. The goal of the assessment is to determine the adult's ability to manage their own care and what level of care will be needed. Currently, Ramsey County has 102 traditional providers, 349 corporate providers. Total adult foster care residents in the county are at 307. Ramsey County welcomes diversity in our family residential service providers. Fire marshal requirements. Inspections are arranged by the county licensor. There is a $50 fee for each inspection and the provider is responsible for this fee. If you are renting, you must get written landlord approval for an inspection. This is the state fire marshal website. If you go to this uh, site and look on the left side of the page, there will be a daycare, foster care inspection information. That'll tell you what the fire marshals will be looking for when they inspect your residence. You must provide three references and you must be at least 18 years old to get your foot in the door for adult foster care. It's important the three people that you use for references are responsible enough to return the forms. We have a major problem getting these references returned and this will delay your application. Everyone in the household age 13 or older must submit to a criminal background study and receive clearance from the Department of Human Services. That study 2.0 is here. Then you will be photographed and fingerprinted and sub submit these prints within 14 days of making application for the study. You must have two caregivers who can serve as emergency backup for you. Caregivers must also be cleared through the current background study process or net study 2.0. You must also train the caregivers uh, about each resident and your policies in the home. All providers and caregivers must have 12 hours of training per year. Providers and caregivers must have annual training on the Vulnerable Adult Act. Some of the traits of a successful adult foster care home, professionalism, timely communication, respect to personal boundaries, patience and perseverance, resourcefulness, understanding and acceptance of the residents, flexibility and adaptability, tolerance of rejection and negative feelings, respect of the individual's family, a willingness to continue learning and developing your skills. 
Basically, you have to have healthy ways for dealing with stress and frustration. You need to have respect for differences of the clients, race, religion, culture. You have to know your own limits. You can't do it all, even though you might want to. For traditional providers, pay attention to how becoming licensed will impact your own family and or children. You have to be able to work as a part of a team with a variety of different personalities and understand you're not here to save anyone. You provide a safe, reliable environment for residents to live and grow. Providers become part of a team. Whoever is important in that person's life is who will be on that person's team. Be aware of privacy issues of the resident. Your Ramsey County Foster Care Licensor will become one of your primary sources of information and support. Three ways adult foster care is funded. Through housing support, formerly known as group residential housing, through disability waivers, and through private pay. Currently, the group residential housing rate is $1,004 per month. That's room and board. There's also a difficulty of care uh, allocation for those who are not on waivers, and that can run anywhere from zero to around $450 a month, depending on the client needs. Waivers are based on the client's uh, functional impairments. The county sets the rate. It's not an entitlement program. Residents have to qualify for these disability waivers. In the case of private pay, that's fully negotiable between the provider and the funding source. Remember that residents are required to pay for some of their own cost of care, whether through employment, disability income, social security, et cetera. The licensing process process can take up to six months from completion of today's information meeting packet. We ask that all providers have an email address for communication. You may be able to get licensed, but there's no guarantee that you will get placements. The atmosphere is changing. We don't know where it will end up. Adult foster care providers are being expected to take more challenging clients for less income. The rule says you have the right to be licensed, but the county doesn't have to place with you. You're not going to get a client from us unless you have the experience to deal with the client's behaviors. Some of the clients coming in have very difficult behaviors. They are corporate level clients, but because there's no money for that level, they are being placed in family foster care. We generally do not recommend providing adult foster care if you have very young children in the home. The more experience you have, the better. Remember this process takes time and please don't quit your day job or rush out and buy a house. Please submit all questions to this email address. Think about what you've learned so far with adult foster care. If you're still interested, complete the eight, uh, adult foster care fact sheet, read and sign the privacy warning. This will help you know what questions you have for upcoming orientation. Rule 203 requires a three hour orientation before placement can be made in your home. Orientations occur twice every six months. We have many current providers sitting with open beds. The more qualified you are to provide the services we're looking for, the more quickly you may receive a placement. Remember the paperwork must be completed before you receive your official application for the license. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.